How to generate Google OAuth to access token and refresh token. Part 1. Setting up Google API projects. In this series of videos, you will learn to generate OAuth to access token of Google that allows you to pass authentication and send email through Gmail through SMTP protocol. In this lesson, we will see the clear big picture of the entire workflow and learn to set up our Google API project in the cloud platform or the good old developer console. So the very first step is to have a Google account or a Gmail account. If you don't have any, please register one. Once you've had a Google account, you can create a project in the Google Cloud Platform or the Developer Console. Either this link or this one should redirect us to the same page. So what are we going to do there? Our objective of this step, as well as the part one of the lesson, is to obtain two parameters. They are client ID and client secrets. With those having been generated in the part 2 of the lesson, we use the client ID to generate another parameter named verification code. Then with the client ID, verification code and the client secrets, we will generate access token and refresh token. The access token is used for a login, but it expires within an hour. So we will use the refresh token, which isn't supposed to change very often. Together with client ID and client secrets, we use them to generate new access token. It also expires within an hour. Then we use the unchanging client ID and the client secrets and long lasting refresh token to generate another new access token, which expires as usual. Now you know what to do then. Alright, I've written a simple tool, Gmail OAuth 2 Utilities, that implement the above workflow. We will learn to use it in the second part of the lesson. It's available in my GitHub page here. In the part 2, we will learn to use the tool with graphic user interface. While well, in the part 3, we will learn to use the command line tool to do exactly the same thing. Alright, before creating this Gmail OS2 utilities, I've spent some time in studying this Python script, OS2.py. So in the part 4, I'll show you how to obtain access token and refresh token from client ID and client secrets with this Python script. And this is a backup link if you want exactly the same version of the software and script. So you can also find out this very node I'm using. Now let's go ahead and achieve our primary objective of the lesson, which is to set up our Google project and obtain a pair of client ID and client secrets. I assume you already have a Google account, so let's go ahead to this site, copy the URL, paste it in your browser address bar, and go. Now you can log into your Google account just as you do to log into your Gmail, fill in your Gmail address. Your password. And next. Alright. It might take a while to log in. I'll speed up the video. Almost there. Alright. When you use Google Cloud Platform for the first time, you might see a screen or something similar. After agree to this term or it doesn't give me a pass. So I agree to the terms and click agree and continue. At this step, we would normally click here and select or create a project. But some of you guys might not see the same page as mine because you're curious and clicking here and there and went ahead of yourselves. Let's say you have clicked here and you're on the home page and seeing a different screen than mine. In this case, you can find out APIs and services and dashboard. Now we are on the same page. Let's continue and create a project. Click here. And new project. All right. Here we need to specify project name, 
It can be whatever makes sense to you. It doesn't matter a lot. I'll name it OAuth test 01. The location, let's keep it as default. All right, we can go ahead and click create. I guess we have to wait for a while. I'll speed up the video anyway. Well, Google has finished creating product for us. We can see a notification and a couple of charts. It's not the focus of this lesson, by the way, but we will generate a pair of client ID and client secret here at OAuth consent screen. Click here. Hey, just a reminder, here. Make sure you haven't selected the wrong project. Now, for the first time, we can click OAuth consent screen. All right. Next up, it seems we have two options, internal user type and external user type. But for most of us, we have only one option, but we can choose the internal. See? So let's select the external or not select anything and click create. Now here, the app name is compulsory. It can be anything, but I'll call it OAuth test 01. The support email can be the one you used to log in. What else? Here, we're required to fill in the contact email. Use your own email address. Now we can click the save and continue. Now you can add some scopes if you have to. I'm gonna skip it in this tutorial. Here we have to add at least one test user. Please fill in your own email address. And click add. Then click save and continue. Well, in the summary page, make sure the information you provide is correct. We're almost done. You can either click back to dashboard or the credentials here. All right, one last step. Click this create credentials. Then click on auth client ID. Now we are required to choose the application type. Let's select the universal Windows platform for the purpose of our tutorials. Okay, forget about it. I don't have a store ID. Let's see, desktop app. All right, all the mandatory information is filled in. We can go ahead and click create. All right, this is almost the end of the part one of this tutorial. We have successfully generated the client ID and client secrets. Now I would like to store them in a notepad for future use. You can either click this download JSON or click this copy button to copy the client ID. And open up your notepad and paste. Now let's copy the client secret as well. Just add some labels for clarity. All right, this is the client ID and client secrets we've been talking about. But before I bring this video to a close, I want to point out how you can find out these parameters. Once you have generated them, they can be found in the Google Cloud Platform, in the APIs and Services, under the credentials, you can click here to copy the client ID or click this edit icon. And you will find out both client ID and client secrets we've been talking about. Finally, for security concerns, do not reveal those credentials. When you don't need them, remember to revoke them or delete them. That's all about part one of the lesson. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.